Hello, welcome to my doctor in class, and thank you for deciding to watch this video. I have a very quick three questions to show you how you should study the infectious control questions um, for your ankles, even with the new generation. They trapping people because they know people get confused easily with this uh, topic. So look at what I'm going to do with these questions. This is to highlight some of the key aspects of uh, infectious uh, control. Um, stick, stay, stick around and see what I have for you. Look at it. We have the four patients present to the emergency room. Which client should be prioritized for an isolation? You have to read the question carefully and analyze what the question is going being asked. What are you being asked? That's my ask. This is the way I would do it. Which client should I prioritize for isolation? So this is an isolation problem. And what is the buzzword? Read the rest of the case. The four patients present to the, we have four patients, they present to the emergency room. And the buzzword is what? Prioritize them for what? Isolation. Therefore, I need to institute infectious control protocol. And which one should I isolate? I know there is a couple of isolation protocol. There is what? Airborne. There is a contact. And there's droplets. So for this question to isolate them, you want to know which one is more dangerous. Contact versus airborne versus droplet. For droplet, you have to be within three feet of them. You are more infectious within three feet. For contact, you basically have to touch them. For airborne, you don't even need to be closer. You can be far away but you can still be infected. Therefore, airborne is more dangerous than droplet followed by contact. If, if I'm going to prioritize this patient, anybody that has airborne problem is more dangerous. So I'm looking for airborne followed by droplet followed by contact. If you have contact, yeah, I need to be too close to you to get infected. If you have droplet, three feet, if you are airborne, even from more than three feet, you can infect me. So prioritization. A client with diarrhea and new C. diff, what's this contact? A client with cutaneous buzzwords, pay attention. Cutaneous diphtheria. We know diphtheria is droplet, right? But when you have cutaneous, it changes, it becomes what? Contact precaution. A client with flank pain due to what? Open, active, shingles. Those are all buzzwords I'm highlighting. And this is what? Act open, active, shingles. If you just have the shingles that is open, we have two things we have to institute. This is an airborne problem. This is also a contact problem. The airborne is a priority. A client with backing cough due to pertussis. We know this is what? Droplet. A client with slap cheek rash due to what? Bavo B19 virus. Yeah, this is what? Droplet bravo. Right. A droplet. A droplet, airborne contact. We have cutaneous contact, contact. Who will you choose? I will choose this patient who has an airborne uh, issue with that. Therefore, this patient should be prioritized to be placed in isolation. That's the way you solve these kind of questions. Okay, the next one. And this is taking care of a client with what active TB infection after recent travel. Which element of transition-based precaution the net should institute when providing wound care? So to answer this question really backward, this is a selector that apply. Transmission, which element, element, which portion of the transmission-based precaution the net should institute when providing wound care? What is the problem? A nurse is taking care of a patient with active TB infection. So what am I being asked is 
I need to institute transition-based precaution for somebody with what TB, and I need to take care of their wound. And the buzzwords are what? TB, active TB, and I need to do what? Wound care for that patient. What is the transmission-based precaution for TB? You already know, it's what? Airborne. And therefore, I need to institute airborne precaution specifically for that. If I'm doing wound care for this patient, there is a risk of wound splashing in my face. And most wound care, you do contact precaution. That's the standard. Or you can call it, you wear your standard precaution stuff to avoid contact um, and stuff on your face. If there's a wound that is going to splash into your face, yeah, standard precaution, and most standard precaution is almost close to contact. Except certain uh, disease process, you just have to do hand hygiene instead of washing your hands. But this patient, airborne plus standard precaution, where I have to wash my hands, wear certain protective as a standard precaution. Gown, this is my standard precaution. Gloves, my standard precaution goggles or facial because I'm touching the wound, it may splash in my face. This is my standard precaution. N95, yeah, that is my what? Airborne problem, okay? Surgical mask, no. And hygiene, my standard precaution. So this is a selected apply. Now you can pass your credit. So you can select those you're confident. Don't select everything that you are not confident. I'm confident that I need to institute some standard precaution. So I have to wear a gown, gloves, goggles. I have to do some hand hygiene. And N95 is for the TB, active TB. So this is the strategy. That is where they will trap you with a bunch of these. You don't know which way to go. But this is it. an active TB patient. I need to institute airborne. At the same time, I'm taking care of their wound. I need to institute my standard precaution. So that is that one. You choose those that you're confident, otherwise you're fine. And lastly, this is the same thing, but I'm modifying what select or apply. Which of the following is appropriate? And then she's taking care of the client with what? Active measles, right? And recent travel, recent diarrhea, Positive for C. diff. I asked that being asked to do is which one is what? Appropriate. What is the case? The patient with measles and also has what? C. diff. And what is the buzzwords? Active measles and C. diff. What do I do? Step back. Don't answer the question. You said measles. What is measles? This is what, airborne. And the patient has C. diff. Well, I have contact issue also. Therefore, all the things associated with airborne and contact, I will do that. Positive pressure room. Airborne patient is negative. Just because you saw pressure room doesn't mean you should pick it. It's negative pressure room. So this is wrong. Single use instrument in the client's room. That is for the C diff. Therefore, this is right. And sanitizes after patient care. And sanitizes is not wrong. Is wrong. You can't just do uh, an hygiene. You have to wash completely with soap and water. Specifically, if it's for C diff, you need soap and water. So this is not right. N95 marks for the nurse. That is for the airborne. Client wear N95 marks for a trip to the radiology. In the client in the negative pressure room with the active measles does not wear N95. Even in the room, they don't wear anything. When you're going to radiology to go get a study, all they wear is a surgical mask. They don't need to wear N95, so this is wrong. Remove your gown, your gloves, your masks in the patient room after care. This is wrong. 
the patients as, as contact and airborne private. When you're done taking care of them, first you wear your mask before you go into the room. You wear your N95, you put on your gown and gloves in a side room. You go to their room. As soon as you finish their care, you remove your gown and your gloves and you keep your mask on until you come out from the side room and then you move your mask. So this is wrong. It's only the gown and gloves that is removed because of the sedative, but the mask N95 stay on until you're out of the room. So this is wrong. So we only have two answer choice. In this next generation, pick those you confidence. If you pick four, you get zero. If you pick three and the two answers are right, you get one. If you, you, you're confident about only one, just pick it because there's only two answers. This is the end of it. This is just to guide you, use it as a companion and look at some of the questions they, you're getting them wrong frequently with infections control. It's because of the way, the strategy, you have to look at it. It's a thinking process and breaking down the question first before you answer. Take care of yourself and have a great day. Bye-bye.